So hi and welcome to another video and today I'm going to show you how to change the switches on the G Pro wireless from the standard Omron switches 50 million clicks to the Kaleth GM switches here. I think that's how you pronounce it but let me know in the comments if not. This is because people sometimes prefer the Kaleth GM clickiness. I know I prefer this switches click and I also just want to try this out myself. You could also do this if you've got a double click problem with the G Pro wireless itself and you can't RMA it to Logitech and you'll be able to swap it out for another Omron switch that you can get off eBay or AliExpress. I bought these from AliExpress and I'll put a link in the description as I will do for everything else in this video. The switches themselves cost about £2 UK, which is about $2. You can get them on Amazon a little bit more expensive than about £6 on Amazon and that's because they are already there from AliExpress, which can take about 20 days to deliver. You're going to need a few tools here to do this. You're going to need a little bit of skill and you're going to need to understand how to take apart the EG Pro Wireless, which is quite a complicated mouse. This mod doesn't require you to take it apart fully. I'm not going to show you today how to take the mouse apart. I've done two videos on this. One is how to mod it, which is this now 60 gram G Pro Wireless, which is my daily runner. Really enjoy this mouse and there's a video how to do that. It also shows you how to take it apart and there's also a teardown video for the G Pro wireless as well. So check out the link for how to do that and this will allow you then to get to the circuit board to allow you to change these switches. So what tools you're going to need? Well you can need a hairdryer to take the feet off or you can use some lighter fluid but I've still not done that yet. I know a lot of you have been telling me that's a good way of doing it but I still use a hairdryer. You're going to need a tool to take the feet off and I use this nylon tool with a thin tip. All this will be in the description as well. I'm using a screwdriver which is a PH0050. I've got a standing knife here to allow me to pry off some of the switches once the solder's removed because it can be a little bit tricky once the last bit of solder's on there. We've got some solder braid to allow you to soak up the additional solder so you can remove them. We have some new solder to put the new switches on once you've done that. We've got a solder pump that I probably won't use but you might want to do that as well, it's up to you. And obviously you're going to need a soldering iron. I've got one here that's got an adjustable temperature, it's quite hard to get the temperature right. So just be careful here when you're doing that, you don't burn your board too badly. Some of the lamination might come off with the heat, but you don't want to burn it to a point where it's crisp. So I've done quite a few modded videos here. I'm going to then do a stage two weight reduction on this where I'm going to drill the shell. I'm going to show you how to do that. But today, like I say, we're just going to show you how to replace the switches. So let's get on and modify these switches. So this is the braid you're going to need. I'm using some blue tack here as well. because This allows it to secure the circuit board so it doesn't move around. I'm just going to use the braid here and the solder iron to work out the solder on the three stems here of the switch. So each time the braid fills out, I'll cut it so that I can get more solder on the edge. And just slowly work it out. Try not to hold the iron on the board too long as you'll cause it to burn and that's not what you want. trying to work off the switch here so I'm trying to use the knife here just to give it a little bit of a lever don't apply very much pressure at all here but this will allow me to keep applying a bit of heat to the legs here of the switch and cause the switch then to pop off the PCB but it takes a little bit of time take your patience here don't rush it keep working it very gently not holding the iron on too long here my hands on the lowest setting which is about 200 degrees C here and like you can see the switch eventually comes off The second switch here gives me a bit more of a problem here. My iron's perhaps cooling down a little bit and I have to give it a little bit more heat. Eventually it does come off again. I'm just working on the excess solder on the legs of these switches to try and soak it up using the braid to allow us to be able to remove it. It does take a bit of time. This probably took me around half an hour to do. I haven't soldered in a while, so forgive my soldering skills here, but it's not too tricky a task. Like I say, just take your time and don't get the iron too hot. There's a little bit of solder in this last leg here that I can't get to, which is stopping me from getting it away here. So I just have to keep working it and working it and working it until eventually it'll come away. I'm 
I also add some additional solder here, trying to take away the excess in the gap of the hole here. This is another little trick you can use to try and get some that's perhaps been a little bit difficult. Keep moving around this PCB here to try and get a better angle on it because it's quite small and quite awkward to get to. And just be careful not to get it too hot. This last one here is a real pain in the ears. Eventually it comes off here. Fortunately I lost the vinyl piece here where it pinged off, I don't know why, but it comes off using the same technique as the first one with the standing knife here, and there you can see it has now come away. Slight bit of discoloration on the PCB, but that's fine. It'll still work as expected. So now we get the new switches. Ensure that you remember the position of these. The little clicker should be at the front of the PCB, as you can see here. I use the blue tech again to hold it in place here because you don't want it moving around, you could use something else. This is all that I had to hand at the time, and then just give a little bit of solder on each leg again, securing it to the PCB. So on the switches to the board for the easiest part, it's getting the old ones off that can be a little bit tricky. But putting these back on is not a problem at all really, it's very quick. Just do not put too much solder on there. And that's it, that's done now. So let's listen to how these sound. If you're not familiar, I have a Beardy Bob website and on there I've got all my statistics for all my reviews I've been doing. I've also got all my links to all my shape comparisons as well and I'm always upgrading it. I've been doing a lot more over Christmas because it's been taking me a while. A lot of people have been asking me since I did my first Jeeper Wireless whether I'll mod their mouse for them. So I've created a web page to allow you to do some customization and order what you want me to mod. It's not going to be cheap, so it isn't for the flight hard because this takes a lot of work but it gives you an idea if you want me to do this for you, what it's going to cost. You don't have to do it. It's up to you. Help support the channel. And until the next video, I'll see you all again shortly. Catch you later. Bye-bye.